Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm going to start off with a land acknowledgement. We want to acknowledge that we gather on traditional land, even virtually, of the Kumuye peoples, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who stewarded it throughout the generations. My name is Aaron Bullard, and I am a board member of the Coral Consortium of San Diego. Uh, we are a service organization composed of choruses and individuals who support the choral art form throughout San Diego County and the Tijuana region. We are a nonprofit organization, official 501c3, uh, and we do programs like this as well as uh, other things around the year, uh, hopefully getting back into them now, uh, such as Beer Choir, and we have a Summer Sings Festival and San Diego Sings, a uh, big performance that we're all uh, trying to get back under the works. If you enjoy tonight and are uh, so inspired to support the San Diego Arts and our organization, uh, there will be a donate uh, button in the chat here and also in the YouTube description. So if you are so moved, please uh, donate and further these programs and, and increase our uh, access throughout San Diego County. Uh, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to have our two conductors introduce themselves, actually. Uh, Yewon, why don't you go ahead and, and introduce yourself first? Hello, everyone. My name is Yewon Lee. I'm a music director for San Diego Festival Chorus. And what else? I live in Encinitas, which is North County. And I have been a pianist and opera coach for my life. And conducting is fairly new compared to what I've been doing. So I did my study in conducting couple of, starting a couple of years ago. So I finished my doctoral degree last year, actually. I earned my doctoral degree at USC. And I am, yes, during this pandemic and now I am looking for more things to do in San Diego. That's it, and Aaron. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, my name is Aaron Burgett, not to be confused with Bullard. Um, I am the director of choral worship at Solana Beach Presbyterian Church, uh, but I live down south here in the town's called Fairmount Park. It's kind of nestled in between South Park and City Heights. Um, and I also sing with Sacra Profana. And I similarly just finished up a graduate program. I did my master's of music in choral conducting at SDSU. Very cool. Thanks so much for joining us again. Since Aaron's Absolutely. birthday is coming up uh, next, he is going to ask the first question and it'll be in the chat. Here we go. Kicking it off with what is your favorite meal to prepare at home? I I'm from South Korea and Korean barbecue is the favorite meal for my family and for me to prepare. What about you? What is your favorite meal to prepare? You know, recently we've gotten into Trader Joe's. They have this uh, frozen sweet potato gnocchi, which we just discovered like a year or two ago. Yeah. And it's super easy to make, really good. You can like accessorize it with zucchinis and a meat if you want. But yeah, that's that's kind of a go-to for me at this point. Trader Joe has so many good stuff. The frozen uh -huh. stuff. Uh-huh. I know. Try. I love their, um, recently I, discovered they have a Korean barbecue called uh, the short ribs. Which nice. Is yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. They have frozen, food. frozen foods is definitely a specialty of mine. <laughs> it's about <laughs> as much as I can handle all that cook cooking. That's fine. <laughs> so Aaron, what is your favorite? Oh, what is that? What's been your best purchase for a hundred dollar or less? Uh, you know, I don't know if this is a hundred percent accurate, but it's definitely on the forefront of my mind right now just because of how hot it's been, but I've got this. Let's see if I can show the camera. This little desk fan, which has honestly been a godsend. <laughs> I have a couple of them, portable and then putting on the desk. Yeah, I do have a couple. Yeah, they're so good. I love it. Very thankful for it. What about you, Yuan? Um, So I think it was the tripod for my cell phone. So when I okay. videos, yeah. that is a lifesaver. I think it, it can be lifesaver for so many choir members, right? Uh-huh. I love it. Yeah. yeah. You, I, at least I did. I thought, you know, I don't really need something like that. I'll just set up books or whatnot. But every time it just falls forward and ruins a recording, then yeah. <laughs> gets another dollar worth it, I guess. I am not big on Instagram or YouTube per se. So I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get it. I'm like, no, that's for 
you know, there's still somebody else, but yeah. once you get it, it's like so useful. Uh huh. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, next question. Who, yeah, next one. What inspired you? Oh, is it your question? You should ask. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Getting a little deeper here. Who or what inspired you to pursue music? Okay, so for me, it was my mother. Uh, she self taught herself playing the piano, but she was never really, really good at it, but she was decent. So she always had that, like, there's some kind of feeling that she wants to learn more, but she couldn't when she mm -hmm. was little. So she really actually pushed me into music. It was piano for me, it's instrument. So yeah, ever since fourth grade, I remember like piano was my instrument. I was committed to and practice like eight hours a day. So my mother, yeah. Wow, I can that's amazing. I pursuing music as my career because I did <laughs> struggle with my mom and my instruments, but I really appreciate at this point that my mom really pushed me through. So mm -hmm. what about you? What, did, what inspired you to pursue music? Uh, well, I got to say before I, I say my own, I'm, I'm so impressed by anyone. So like within the, within the last 10 years where YouTube has become really popular, it's been amazing that it's made so many things accessible to become self-taught in. So anyone who has become self-taught at anything before the last 10 years, it's like a whole nother level of impressive. So True. props to your mom for that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, personally, so I did a decent amount of music growing up. I was in bands in elementary school and middle school. And then in high school, uh, sports kind of took over my life. I was doing football and basketball, a little bit of track. And with that, um, I didn't really do any ensemble music in high school until my senior year, at which point I knew I was still interested in music, but didn't know if I would want to major in it or would want to just uh, like join a band in college. So I decided to take a music theory course that my high school was offering just to kind of gauge my own interest and. Wow, um, when you're senior. Yeah, okay. yeah. And to like explore whether that would be something I'd even be good at. Um, and so I took that class and it turned out to be one of the best classes I've ever taken in my life super fun, had made some really good friends in that class as well, who uh, kind of helped prod me and encourage that passion. But during that class, I had a friend named Marcus, who is also a, cor a choral director these days. And he invited me to join his acapella group for a performance that they were doing during one of the, the choir concerts, because uh, different student groups could audition to put on something during those concerts. And so he asked me to join. And I did, and that was the first kind of real singing experience that I had. And then after doing that concert, the director asked me if I wanted to join the choir just for the last show that they were doing of the year. So wow. just that last quarter really of my good. senior year. <laughs> yeah, that's when I jumped in the choir and that kind of uh, lit the spark. And then from then on, college and forward, wow. uh, really dove into it. Did you, do you still talk to that choir director or the music theory teacher? They must be really proud of you. <laughs> I have talked to the choir director a little bit. Um, he actually just graduated. I think this, yeah, this spring was his last semester teaching at the high school. Um, and yeah, my friends in that class too, like I mentioned, Marcus is, is still one of my best friends and he, uh, he went to Pepperdine and is doing some directing of choirs up in LA and singing and teaching over there. So yeah, great connections lifelong. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So next question. What keeps you inspired in music today? Hmm. I think that naturally coming back from all the separation that we've had over the past year and a half, um, that's one of the things that has just made it a little bit easier to uh, have that itch to want to get back into it and just to make music in any capacity we can. So that's kind of just like a, a natural, helpful inspiration. Um, but I think in terms of ways that I try to help inspire myself, 
is by continue, continually exploring different avenues of music. So whether that's, um, I don't know, finding opportunities to perform on an instrument that I'm not as comfortable on, or whether that's doing music that I haven't had as much experience performing and teaching, just like finding new ways to challenge myself. I think that's one of the most inspiring ways to, to kind of keep me engaged. What about yourself? So for me, I have, I really try hard to put myself in a conductor's shoes besides pianist or opera coach. So I've been like, okay, I should do conducting more, more. I listen to more choral music. I should listen to more of this and that. And all of a sudden there are little opportunities to perform with my old students. So I play for them and I coach it for them. And they like, for during this pandemic, they're like, oh, I need this accompaniment. Can you please play for me? And can you just record a piano accompaniment? So those little things sparks, like I'm like, this is why I, I am still doing music. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be really like always like choral related. I've been thinking like I should do this way more, but just music itself really inspired me. And also I'm, I'm a church musician too. And thinking about every weekly, our, our routines, like pick an anthem and pick a music for the church service. It also inspired a lot of different things, right? Yeah. So, like daily life. I mean, we can really separate, think separately from our life and music. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I will say also, um, something that just came to mind is especially during my master's program recently, something that also would spark some inspiration was just realizing that even though everyone will always constantly have more that they can learn and um, a better level that we can constantly be working towards, at the same time, it's also inspiring that that next level doesn't look the same for everyone. Like mm -hmm. just even just watching different conductors, you might have 10 different conductors who are, you could say are equally as talented and brilliant and, and genius, but they might, their motions while conducting might look completely different from each other. And mm -hmm. they might go about teaching the music in different ways from each other. Oh, so sure. just kind of seeing how different that can play out for different people is another thing that really inspires me. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think this is me. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. What is your favorite San Diego venue to perform in and then worldwide venue? I still feel like I'm a fairly new to San Diego, so I don't have a lot of venues I've been to. Worldwide <laughs> venue, definitely Carnegie Hall. Because I cool. was in New York and I was there. That was like my, my dream and then my husband's dream too. He's like, can I see your face in Carnegie Hall in my, like, my life? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so that's always been my, like, that's my, the number one venue. But yeah. Did you say there? you lived in New York? Yeah, I went to school in New York for four years. Yes. I was oh, okay. In, yeah. Cool. Yeah, kind of similar for me. I don't, I... I'm not necessarily super new to San Diego. Like I've been here, uh, how long now? Nine years at this point. Oh, so a decent decent amount of time. But I wouldn't say I'm necessarily the the biggest, like the most seasoned performer at different venues. Similarly, so I don't know. Yeah, um, there's one church in in Pacific Beach that Soccer Profana has performed at a couple times. I don't remember the name of it, but it's really cool. And it has uh, this like river looking mosaic that goes down the aisle in the center and also goes up the the wall in the back. There's a big cross in the middle. So I don't remember the name of the venue. If anyone remembers it, feel free to send it to Aaron and, and type it in there. But that's one really cool one just aesthetically to perform in. Worldwide venue. Um, similarly, I'm not the most experienced worldwide performer, but we went on a couple of choir tours uh, during my undergrad program. Uh, the first of which was through the UK, England and Scotland. And so 
I mean, just anytime you have the opportunity to, to perform in a cathedral with so much resonance, that's like a whole new element, which similarly, I guess, ins helps uh, keep the musical inspiration alive because it's a really different experience than performing in a drier venue. Mm. Yes, Christ, Christ Lutheran Church. That's the one I'm talking about. In Pacific Beach. Yep. Yeah. In San Diego, there are so many beautiful churches, I realize. Mm hmm. So actually, tomorrow, uh, I'm lucky enough to get the opportunity to check out the new shell uh, down on the harbor that the symphony just built. So oh. I'm excited to to go to a performance there. That'll be fun. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is, what's the best Mexican food place in San Diego? This has got to I'm sure this is the most controversial one on every single conductor conversation. Um, That's a good question. I think mine has changed over time. It used to be Ortiz's. I think they've got a couple of them, but the one that I would go to is in Point Loma um, because they're California burrito. They do it with the, the perfectly crisped fries and just a little bit of a doughy tortilla. So yeah, just a, re a really good blend of textures in that California burrito. Um, El Zarape on Park Boulevard is also really good. Not the one on Adams though. They're very different, and the one on Park is way better. Um, yeah. But, Have you been to Fidel's right next to your church? Yes. Yeah. That's I, that's actually probably my favorite atmosphere of a yeah, Mexican restaurant it. in San Diego. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. For me, we I have two kids, teenagers. We don't go out to eat more than let's say five miles, probably five to ten miles. We don't mm -hmm. want to go out to far away. So Fidel, yeah. our go-to place when we want to have Mexican food. So yeah, you can't go wrong. It's so fun there. It is. It is. And there, yeah, it's anytime when we go there, we always have great time. Yeah. Do well as a seasoned Solana Beach restaurant tour, <laughs> do you have any other restaurant favorites around that area? You know what? I <laughs> I moved to Encinitas last year. Okay. It was the day everywhere closed, March 13th, Friday, March 13th. We no moved way. to Encinitas. Yeah, that is the day. I, I cannot forget the date. I didn't have wow. papers because we were moving. <laughs> so that's, that was the day. But in last year and a half with this pandemic, we only tried two or three restaurants in Encinitas mm -hmm. uh, near the beach. Everywhere is really good. <laughs> like Encinitas, those, those, the the street, I'm sure Solanovic has a lot of places, decent. Yeah, you Encinitas is nice. I haven't done a ton of exploring there, but it's it's cool. I feel like it strikes a good balance between um, like nice and clean and enjoyable, but also down to earth and it's very hit. relatable yeah. to, yeah, yeah, it's fun. I like it. All right. So what, uh, what is the most used app on your phone? So for me, it's either my Waze app that <laughs> I have to go find places for my kids. Yeah. Their tournaments, they, they, my son plays baseball and football. So either Waze or my email. I think that's boring, but that's the most used map. For mm -hmm. my what about yours? That's all right. Honestly, like it's, it's nice that cell phones have become almost computers at this point. So if you forget your laptop at work one day, you can do most of what you need to right from your phone. Um, for me, probably recently, it's been the Amazon Prime app oh. because I've been uh, going to the gym most mornings and then I just put my phone up on the stand on the treadmill and then I watch How, How I Met Your Mother and take my mind off of the running <laughs> while I'm going. Okay. Do so you yeah. remember the times you have to print out the direction and that you are following. Maybe you're not that generation. I don't no, know. No, yeah, I definitely experienced that. <laughs> we have a map quest. We exactly. Out. Oh my gosh. Yes, I can. Oh, good it. times. Yeah, you don't want to take a wrong turn with that because there's no rerouting. <laughs> no, you can't. And you are really looking for the, the road signs. So I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. And I don't want to <laughs> use the, uh, the color ink. So I have to print black and white oh yeah but thank goodness we have so software. true 
<laughs> so let's see. What is a favorite memory of yours involving the ensemble you're currently involved with? Hmm. Well, one that, that is relatively recent for me uh, was just as we're rejoining at the church. Um, I really enjoyed, we, we had a, a choir picnic out on our patio mm -hmm. uh, a couple, it was probably three or four months ago now. Um, and that was just a blast to see everyone again, because we'd had like Zoom rehearsals and virtual choirs and whatnot, but hadn't all been together in the longest time, as I'm sure so many people here have experienced. Um, but that was really special. Just the first time we got to see each other again. Uh, You're yeah. Person now or no? Yeah. So over the summer, what we've done is basically one rehearsal a month during the June rehearsal, we did a recording that was used during a service. Mm -hmm. And then just this last week, we also took a recording that will be used, uh, later this month in a service. And then the goal is during September to start up our, our weekly rehearsals in person again. Um, so hopefully that, that holds out, but we'll see. What about you? How, how are things? Well, I guess both, <laughs> how are things going with your choirs right now? And also what, what favorite memories do you have? So my favorite memory with my choir, this is going into third year with my choir, me directing. The favorite memory was when we shut down last March, we were preparing our concert in end of April, probably maybe beginning of May, I don't know, but we were preparing, but we all shut down, right? And we didn't know what to do. And we were waiting for a couple of weeks and then we start Zoom rehearsal. And I'm sure a lot of choirs and choral directors experienced the same thing. I jumped in uh, on making virtual choir and my choir member was like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to record myself, blah, blah, blah. So long story short, we did really short virtual choral piece. And we, I shared with them through Zoom. So we all watched the virtual choir project together for the first time ever for them and for me too. I mm -hmm. mean, sharing and then I see their faces their face with full of joy after the couple months of lockdown and it i will never forget that i wish i video record everything but i still i get i get chills i like i yeah. get that moment so much that really has driven me doing another virtual choir project and another one I hope we don't do it anymore, but if right. we do, I can still do it because of that yeah. story was unforgettable. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. The joy of those virtual choir projects are very backloaded, aren't they? Because like during the process, honestly, it's not the most enjoyable. It's not fun just to sing by yourself and, and record yourself on the cell phone and send it in. But then once you see the final product with everyone else, that's, yeah, that's where you kind of reap the benefit of it all. Yeah, I think it's even more so as a director who make this project, listen to same song over <laughs> and over and over is really not fun. Yeah. But to see the result and then the process, everything comes together at the end. I really enjoyed so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're just listening to like only a tenor part or only an alto part and it's, <laughs> Like there's nothing necessarily melodic in there, but it's just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no background, just voice, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. That was good. Good that was times. Good. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, next question. What have you learned about yourself during quarantine? Yeah. Doing virtual choir. <laughs> like, <laughs> completely new. I see your microphone. Like, it looks very professional see something like that, like audio. I mean, I'm still so baby doing this, but the fact that I started and I was able to make something, I think it's a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. What about you? What yeah, for you sure. Um, what did I learn about myself during quarantine? I mean, similarly, I would say that I didn't 
I mean, I still don't know a lot about audio production and all that, but that was, I think, a learning curve for, for everyone right. in the yeah. ensemble music making world. Um, well, I also, for me, I learned how to spend time with your family 24 <laughs> seven, which was great. Really, it was. We, as a family, we learned. It was, it took a couple months. I mean, let's say a couple of weeks. Months seems really long. So a couple <laughs> weeks. But we really, as a family, I have a boy and a girl and my husband, we are getting together every day. And then at some point we all got the routines down and it was really enjoyable time mm. being together. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, maybe I'm just copying everything you're saying, but <laughs> on, on our end too. So I'm married. I have a wife named Maddie and uh, we live together in this house with a couple of roommates as well. And so we actually moved in here during the pandemic in September of last year. Okay. And yeah, so that I mean, obviously it's a, a learning curve to go from just living as a couple to living with some of our best friends, but that, I mean, has been so helpful. Um, just having a little bit wider circle of interaction than we might have had otherwise. Yeah. Um, and I think, I don't know, I kind of go up and down learning this about myself, but sometimes I get much more extroverted and sometimes I get much more introverted. So like, uh last month or a couple months ago as numbers were going down and things were looking better things were opening up um i was really excited to go out and see people and spend time interacting with those i hadn't seen in a long time but then after a couple of weeks of just catching up with a lot of people who i hadn't seen in a long time i was so ready to just not see anyone <laughs> for a long time as well so yeah that's been another uh thing going in waves throughout quarantine Oh, I remember what else I learned. I don't have a green thumb. I don't like going out to garden, but I had to do it on my own. So I start picking the weeds. And then have you picked weeds before? Uh, not since living at my parents' house. It's not fun. <laughs> and But the more you do it, the better you get it. I'm like, wow. I and mean, it's so satisfying. <laughs> and I get really good at it. I'm like, I, it's first time I remember it took like four hours. I don't have oh, to either, but it just took so long. But now I can do it in one hour. I'm like, oh, there and there. Okay, I'm going. No I, way. It's so funny. And that's, wow. yeah, so I don't get much stressed about the weeds anymore. <laughs> so stressful last year. Yeah. So I started, I, uh, I started hiking. Um. That was fun. Tory Pines. Have you been to Tory Pines Reserve? A couple times, yeah. Yep. I never knew I like I love nature. I love nature. <laughs> I love it. I go yeah. every day, at least once or twice. Wow. Just being there is like really good. So because during quarantine you can't really go anywhere, you know. Mm -hmm. But just walking with family, it was so refreshing and yeah. Yeah, the whole time, the first walk with my family, my husband was like, I didn't know you love nature this much. <laughs> I kept saying, I'm like, me neither, I didn't know. So Yeah, well, especially living in San Diego and having the opportunity to have spent a lot of time outside, whereas with That's most cool. of the country, obviously fall and winter comes and you have to kind of stay inside. So yeah, that's a big, big upside for us living here. We're so lucky, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Who's asking this one? I am going to ask you. You only get one song to listen to for the rest of your life. <laughs> what is it? It'd probably have to be something long. Because I, I mean, there might be shorter songs that I love, but in terms of listening for the rest of my life, I'd need some. Um. Let's say Messiah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Actually, so there's this song. Um, it's a band that I just found out about last year. Their name is Lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E. -E. Mm -hmm. um, they're kind of like a, like a gospel funk 
style band. And they've got this song called More. That's really, really good. It's a kind of a hype up song and heavy on the horns, heavy on the, uh, the tight harmonies throughout the piece. Yeah, that's a good one. So that might be at the front of my list right now. For me, I love the Christian musician. His name is Phil Wickham. Mm -hmm. I love his song, Living Hope. Every time I listen, it just gives me new, not only new hope, but new thoughts. So I, I think I can listen to that at least 500 times. If it's not, <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to leave. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that one too. We do it at, at Solana Beach Presbyterian. So I hopefully we can get our choir back in the loft to, to sing that with the band one of these days. Oh, I love all of his music. Mm -hmm. Release is so good too. Who, who is that? His new released song. Oh, okay. Once. So is it a single or a full album? He kept releasing a single. It's not okay. Full yeah. I'll have to check that out. I haven't heard his newer stuff. All right. I'll uh, ask you this next one. What have you learned from a setback you experienced? So for me, there was time, my husband, Daniel, he worked in Korea for two years while I was full-time student and I had two kids in elementary school. So I learned how to prioritize my daily life because I can do everything perfectly, you know? I mean, you have to say all the choral directors are like type A people, <laughs> they do it well, but I learned to list things, what I have to do it really, like this is number one thing I have to do it. And then I really think about like how long I have for this and this, this. So to better organize better and just live my life easier that I really learned it throughout my life with kids and yeah. trying to have career, yeah. That is amazing. That doesn't even sound possible to me, so. I am very impressed. I drove to USC from San Diego for two years. Oh my gosh. Four days a week. Wow. <laughs> I was done and it was wild. So worth it. If you want to get DMA degree, I strongly recommend USC. You can do it from San Diego. <laughs> Fine. It was fun. It's a great experience. Did you ever cross paths? Well, when did you finish your program at USC? You said just this last spring? After I I finished with my, my dissertation, but I was school 2014 through 17. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, you might have crossed paths with Jacob Broussard. Oh, you know him? undergraduate. Yes, tall. Yeah. 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 Well, he was one of my best friends in that uh, in that music theory class in high school. You are kidding me. Yeah. Oh, small world. Uh huh. I was with his uh, same choir chamber choir for two years I believe with him okay cool fun fun person he composed music really well too you know yeah that. right yeah I think I'm trying to remember I think he originally declared a music composition major and then maybe switched to choral music he was at least considering it but yeah he's a really good composer yes he is very talented mm -hmm. oh small world yeah I Ooh. assume you know Sander Choi as well oh yeah, 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 of course, Sander. Yeah. yeah, 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 very fun. He's amazing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, setback that I experienced. Um, I mean, I think. So like one thing that comes to mind is uh, when I was in my undergrad program, I was auditioning to be the music director of my acapella group and uh, didn't end up getting voted into the position. Uh, but eventually a few months later, things fell through with the other person who was, who was serving in that role. Um, and, you know, at that time was when I stepped into filling that music director position. So I think from an experience like that, something that I took away was um, 
first of all, just be prepared because you never really know when opportunities are going to open up for you. But there have been other times where like doors have closed and I've been turned down from positions. And then looking back at them in the future, I think, you know, I think ultimately I'm glad that I didn't end up in that role. Um, yeah, so luckily things have worked out that way. And I know that's not necessarily always the case, but I think a takeaway that a lot of people could mm. could learn from an, an experience like that is just to um, like make the best of what situations come your way and, and find how you're going to adjust from whatever has come at you rather than um i guess sulking and and staying upset for too long about an opportunity that's fallen through yeah it is really hard to take that and just set aside and then keep going forward mm -hmm. it is really important yeah yeah I, and I, i'm sure most musicians know how <laughs> how frequently those rejections come yes yes I was so glad that I was pianist, not a singer. Because singer does way more aud auditions than directors or pianists, right? Mm -hmm. They have so many auditions. I played for them so many times. And I went through all this, I don't want to say failure, but you don't get callbacks and you don't get calls. But mm -hmm. I think I learned a lot from them too, as well, how to move forward and never give up. And we all always, we say, there is always there's a reason you know some things happen and there will be a place for you so that, that's great that's great yeah. yeah yeah okay so what artist or group would you most like to collaborate with Ooh. uh speaking of learning from watching fantastic conductors over the past couple years um jason max ferdinand from the Aeolians of Oakwood University. I got to see them perform at ACDA a couple of years ago. And that group puts on life-changing performances. They are so, so good. And let me actually just type that into the chat so that anyone can look them up. Um, yeah, if there was ever the opportunity presented to me to do anything with that group, that's, that's something that I would drop everything for and, and make it work. That's kind of a dream of mine. Aeolian, I just think about yeah. the, the like A minor scale. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> right. What about you? Dream artist and group to collaborate with? You know why? Really, maybe that's really bad. I just love my group so much. I'm like, do I have to collaborate with somebody? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like ooh, I just want to have my group. That's a good place to be satisfied so i don't know i'll just skip this question <laughs> nice all right um okay yewan describe the rest of your life in five words like from from this point on is that what you're asking aaron okay can we just do five separate words uh -huh. if i can do five words i will do Family, family, God, music, thankful, happiness. Those five. That's going to be my life. Mm. It'll be a successful life if I have this five like, <laughs> there. Yeah, uh, what more do you need? I mean, ditto. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there are any words that I would change or add to that for my own. Travel, that's oh, yeah, another thing that, that I value. Yeah. Okay. So that would be a, so our, our, our senior pastor, Pastor Mike McClenahan, he has done the Camino de Santiago, which is in Spain. It kind of stretches all the way from France to the West End of Spain. Yeah. 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 And it's a pilgrimage that a lot of people yeah. do across the country, like 500 miles long, depending yeah. on the route you take. Mm -hmm. um, and he was just actually back there a couple of weeks ago doing another smaller portion of it. Oh. So I think um, fitting under the umbrella of travel, that's that's kind of a bucket list item for myself that I'd love to do before dying. That's a good thing. Yeah. Wow. Do you have any uh, bucket list items off the top of your head? 
we wanted to do family do family trip in Europe, but not specific. No. Yeah. No. There you go. <laughs> well, then you're easy to please. I am. I'm really easy to please. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm really easy. Yeah. That's yeah. True. We, I did not like travel so much. And then my husband, because of his job, he does marketing, he travels a lot. So he does not want to add more travel in his life. So we were not yeah. travel lovers as family. But since pandemic hit, we, the fact that we can go the places we want to go, it's like, mm, I really want to go. Yeah. So I think once pandemic, like, slows down and then they say it's safe to go places you want to go that's the first thing yeah. i'm going to go anywhere and i think that's the good place that you mentioned i would love to do that well but i'm sure especially like if you mentioned traveling between new york and south korea that like that's a long haul it is. travel journey that's not like uh california to oregon oh no <laughs> it's a whole Are different experience oregon? uh my wife's from oregon okay she's actually up there right now I'll be joining her on Wednesday. Okay. You're not yeah. driving, are you? No. Okay. Not flying up there. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah. It's fun. All right. Looks like we got the last question. Where can we find out more about you and your choirs? Go for it, Yewan. So my choir is San Diego Festival Chorus. You can just Google San Diego Festival Chorus and it will lead into our website, we meet every Monday night. We are about to start a new season. It's going to be after um, Labor Day and we are planning to do Rotter's Gloria and some fun cool. music. So if you wanna join, you're welcome to come anytime. We don't audition people, you can join anytime. Very okay. nice. That sounds super fun. Um, yeah, so for me, you're welcome to send me an email and I'll, I'll send that in the chat as well. And then this is the church's website. And if you just follow the, the links to the, um, uh, the music ministry portion of it, then you can scroll down and read about the choir. But really, um, if you're interested in joining, I'd say just reach out directly to me and I'll send you any details that you need to know. But then I'll also continue to post about events that we have coming up. Like if you ever want to attend, uh, for instance, the, the Christmas choirs that we've got planned for uh, December 5th, we'll have concerts during the services that morning. So feel free to come out and join for those. We'll have a choir and a, a small orchestra for those. Um, but I will also be posting about those on the uh, CCSD website as well. So check that out if you want to find out more. Oh, I'm going to put my email too. If anybody has a question, they can come out and ask me. I will go. definitely visit you. You guys, you are so close. Yeah. <laughs> we We'd love to have you yeah. come join. Yeah, anytime. Okay. I think that's it. That's for awesome. Today. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for participating again. At this point, we can bring everyone back on camera and everyone can say hi and, and ask any other questions they might have. Uh, we can pause the recording at this point and this will be again up on YouTube. So if you thought 